Tommy Robinson was banned from Facebook and Instagram today. I'll obviously want to discuss that, but I'm waiting for more info to be posted. Facebook has listed the reasons for the ban, and a number of media outlets have shared the story, but since I don't trust Facebook or these media outlets to report accurately on something like this, I'd like to see a response from Tommy before I comment. In the meantime, I wanted to take a look at why people are being removed or restricted by all of the major platforms, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, and Patreon, for doing absolutely nothing that actually violates any rules. Let's take YouTube as an example. YouTube announced in recent months that they were going to start enforcing the community guidelines more strictly. But what they've actually done, as far as I can tell, is simply order their review team to block more videos, whether the videos violate the community guidelines or not. Eleven days ago, I posted a video titled, Who Will Destroy the Kaaba? Prophet Muhammad Answers. The video was about Muhammad's prophecy that a black man would eventually destroy the Kaaba. I criticized the prophecy as yet another example of Islam's bias against black people. Two days later, YouTube took down the video for supposedly violating the platform's policy against hate speech. I appealed the decision and posted a video about it, and a bunch of you complained, and YouTube reversed its decision later that day. The video was restored, and the strike was removed. Problem solved, right? No, this is the new and improved, more strictly enforced community guidelines, YouTube. Yesterday, the same video was taken down again for violating YouTube's community guidelines on hate speech. Now think about this. Someone originally sent YouTube a false flag, saying that my video contained hate speech. A YouTube reviewer somehow agreed that it contained hate speech, took down my video, and gave me a strike. I appealed that decision, and my appeal went to another reviewer who actually watched the video and realized that it doesn't contain hate speech. This reviewer restored my video. Later, another person sent YouTube a false flag claiming that my video contained hate speech. Another YouTube reviewer somehow agreed that it contained hate speech, took down my video, and gave me a strike. So I filed another appeal, and unless the appeal goes to the right person, I've got a community guidelines strike for 90 days. The penalty is that I'm not allowed to live stream for 90 days. Now, how many live streams do I do per week? I live stream about three or four times a week, if not more. So YouTube takes away all of those live streams, all of those discussions over what? over me posting a video criticizing Muhammad's prophecy that a black man was coming to destroy Islam's holiest site. Total false flag, but YouTube just isn't that interested in protecting creators from false flags. YouTube's community guidelines system is a joke. It encourages social justice warriors and keyboard jihadis to flag content that they regard as hate speech when these groups view anything they disagree with as hate speech. And it works. You want to know why? Think about this. Let's say you're a social justice warrior, and you flag a hundred videos claiming that they're hate speech. Those flags go to YouTube, and people who work at YouTube look at your flag, and they go to investigate. Some of those reviewers actually do their job and recognize that they're seeing false flags. But other reviewers happen to be social justice warriors or keyboard jihadis. In other words, there are people at YouTube who regard anything they disagree with as hate speech. And when content is flagged as hate speech, and they're the ones who review the content, they have an opportunity to be activists. They can say, yes, this is in fact hate speech because it criticizes Muhammad or it criticizes abortion, or criticizes something else that no one should ever criticize. So we're taking down this video and taking away privileges from the person who posted it. And this is the problem. All of the popular platforms have a flagging system which can be used by anyone, even total screwballs. Those flags are reviewed by people who work for the platforms, 
but the people who do the reviewing are human beings who are driven by their ideologies. So there's an incentive for social justice warriors and keyboard jihadis to flag content they disagree with because some of the reviews will be done by people who agree with them and who will remove the content. And guess what? If this happens three times in a three-month period on YouTube, someone's channel can be removed. This means that if you don't like what someone says, all you have to do is organize a group of false flaggers who keep flagging the content until you get lucky with three reviewers who agree with you. So this sort of thing is happening on all of the major platforms, which is why I don't really trust Facebook when they say that Tommy Robinson was banned for hate speech. When I eventually get banned from YouTube, YouTube will say that I was banned for hate speech, even though I will actually be banned because of a system that encourages false flags. These are dangerous times, my friend. I would love to see some alternative platforms that have a strong commitment to protecting speech become viable alternatives, meaning that they're serious competitors to YouTube and Twitter and Facebook and so on. Until then, no one who says anything that a social justice warrior or a keyboard jihadi would find offensive is going to be safe on any of the major platforms.